we're here to talk Transformers. If you're watching this video, chances are you know what the 86 movie is. If you don't, then you're either a brand new fan or you don't know what the hell you're doing on YouTube. The importance of the Transformers 86 movie is incredible. It developed countless new characters and storylines that are still in use today. Of course, one of those characters is Ultra Magnus. He's kind of the stick up his ass commander type. When it comes to his toys, it's always a toss up on what you're gonna get. Are you gonna get a white Optimus Prime, a white Optimus Prime with armor, or just Magnus? It's always kind of a toss up. I prefer my Magnus to just be his own thing, not armor or not a white Optimus. I did have the Combiner Wars one for a while, but it just wasn't that great anymore. As if to answer my prayers, Hasbro revealed the Studio Series 86 Commander Class, Ultra Magnus. This thing is pure chunk. Unlike some of the other smaller Commander Classes we've gotten, this one really looks and feels worth the money. This ratchets are nice and loud. Every joint that isn't a ratchet joint on this guy is still pretty tight. Except the arm hinges. They look fine now and they function fine now, but now this is a huge butt. Right out of the box, this guy's arms would not stay up at all. So I got up the courage and I did the super glue trick and it worked fine. The only other time I've tried it was on my Core Class Sound Blaster, and it melted the ball joint in his arm, so I've been scared to try it ever since. I just hope that it stays intact long enough, maybe like another year or two. If one of you guys know how long Super Glue lasts on action figure joints, just let me know in the comments. Either though, this guy is absolutely massive and hunky, he poses like a charm. You can untab this little red thing right here, and that gives you an amazing butterfly joint. Of course, how could I talk about this figure without bringing up the posable fingers? A feature introduced by Siege Jetfire a mini five years ago really, really helps this guy out. These are probably some of my favorite articulated fingers in my collection. Other than just your standard Voyager size figure with them, or a leader class figure with them, or even Haslab Deathsaurus, his pointer finger is individually articulated, and the other three are all on the same hinge. Of course, articulation is nice and all, but really the deciding factor on if you want a figure or not is the look. And ba- oh. oh boy, this thing looks fantastic. All of the nice smooth angular details on this guy really, really pop here. A lot of his area is smooth and very clean looking. But then it's all broken up with this beautiful amount of sculpt and paint. I really, really love the vent detail on his chest. The blue on the inside of the leg is kind of weird to me because I thought it was supposed to be white, but it really doesn't matter. And of course, how could I ignore the shoulder pylons? Yeah, they look pretty good. They're uh, ultra magnusy. Oh, please, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm gonna talk about the head sculpt. This might be one of the single best head sculpts in all of Transformers toys. You have the very pronounced cheekbones and lips, the very stern, hard-ass expression, and how could you not love the crystal clear light piping? Holy moly! I feel like I could just take a dive right into his eyes and swim around. And I know nobody else is going to care about this detail, but I did because I've watched the 86 movie a hundred times. I really enjoyed that they painted this bit here silver. They didn't have to, but they did. If this was just how he was, as is, I'd be pretty okay with it. But he comes with a lot more. The missiles on the shoulders are just that missiles. You can actually take the missile bit out, and he comes with, personally, my favorite of the blast effects. Just take it apart, and bada bing bada boom, you have this amazing looking firing display. And of course, you can reconstitute all the blast effects. Not only does he come with the big one, but he also comes with two extra of the tips. And these just so happen to fit perfectly into the included guns. 
You get a big one and you get a small one. The small one is actually really cool. It's not exactly what I envision when I envision Ultra Magnus, but it works. I really love the detail on it and the rose gold slash kind of silvery paint job really helps it pop. And pretty much same with the big one. Amazing sculpting, amazing paint apps, just one thing is kind of odd. Both of them are just cast in clear plastic, which actually I like. And I'm only saying I like it because Hasbro wasn't dumb like they usually are. They actually took it a step further and put these pegs in the gun that are just solid plastic. The guns can be translucent plastic without the worry of the handles breaking. And if you so choose, you can put the guns on his back. And of course, how could I forget one of the most important features of this figure? Untab these and then untab the chest. Lift it up and... He has a spring-loaded matrix chamber. I really love all the techno detail inside of this chest. It's so cool looking and sci-fi and retro. I... Aw, oh, it just tingles my brain. Of course, you can take the matrix out. And that's really where the butterfly joints come in, so he can do the... Open. Damn it, open! Is that a motherfucking seal reference? Overall, for the Matrix, it's fine. I do like the color scheme on it more than any other Matrix we've gotten, but it's just the same one. I know we're gonna get a Commander Class Optimus later this year, but this would have been a prime time to give us a new Matrix. Because as it stands, the Matrix here is extremely small for him to hold. It was a bear to get him in the opening the Matrix pose. But that's kind of just a problem with this figure in general. He just looks so big. It especially becomes odd when you put him next to Grimlock and he's taller than Grimlock. I don't think that's right at all, actually. If they had just swapped and made the Dinobots Commander Classes and Ultra Magnus a leader class, I know people would be pissed, but at least they'd look better together. It's not that big of a deal. They're both amazing figures, but it's just something that slightly irks me. But other than Grimlock, I think he fits in with everything pretty much perfectly. And of course, before we get into the transformation and alt mode, we know what we have to do. Look. To be, or not to be. I don't know. I'm not really a Shakespeare person. But of course, why wouldn't you want to recreate one of your favorite scenes of your favorite character from your favorite movie being brutally exploded and murdered? Fun! For everyone! I actually kind of find it funny how two figures so far in the Studio Series 86 line just fall apart as a gimmick. And that's really all I have to talk about with the robot mode, so let's just get into transformation, shall we? Another thing is these wheels are on a hinge and you just hinge him down and he's on the ground now. Honestly, this truck mode is an absolute beast. The car corral is huge and amazing. I love how long and big it is. I love that it can actually hold cars, unlike the Siege and Kingdom versions. And oh no, pots farming. I say this in almost every single video. Nobody cares if it's a parts former. And if for some reason you do care about parts forming, grow up 
They're Transformers toys. They parts form in the cartoon. This is probably the best mainline Ultra Magnus Hulk mode we've ever gotten. And please Hasbro, give me a new kickover. Sadly, there doesn't seem to be any weapon storage I found for the guns, but I could be wrong. I overlook a lot of things. It rolls pretty well, so that's gotta be worth something, right? One of my favorite features is actually one that I know pisses people off. The parts forming. I love that you can have the cab and the trailer separately. It's something that just makes so much sense to me, but they haven't done it yet. Great job on Hasbro's part for that. Outside of just repeating what I said for robot mode, like the sculpt and the paint is nice, there's not much to talk about. So let's get into my final thoughts. Oh, overall, what do I think about this figure? I think it's downright perfect. This is the Ultra Magnus of my dreams, and the Ultra Magnus I've been wanting since ever. The Siege one was a massive disappointment, the Combiner Wars one was just mid, Kingdom one was basically just the Siege one, but this one? It's new. It's very full. It feels hefty. It's nice and chunky. It doesn't feel hollow and crappy like the Combiner Wars one doesn't feel loose and fiddly like the Kingdom or Siege one. It's just a downright solid figure. Of course, there is the issue I had with the shoulders that I already fixed, but it's still an issue nonetheless, and I can't ignore it. This figure honestly puts the Ultra and Ultra Magnus and Commander in Commander class. I cannot be happier about that. I highly, highly recommend this guy. If you can find him for a decent price, definitely get him. I've seen Big Bad Toy Store have him in stock a couple of times. That's actually where I got mine from, but you can check other places too. Overall, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to see more and you haven't already, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace! Most Transformers names I get. The robot with the spinning parts is called Spinister. The spaceship train is called Astro Train. So what's the deal with Huffer and Thrust? They're named for very specific hobbies.